10 Vitamin Deficiencies and the Neurological Diseases They Cause Number 1. B12 Also known as cobalamin, this vitamin is abundant in animal products, meat, milk, cheese, and eggs. Deficiency can occur in strict vegans, but the vitamin is recycled efficiently by the liver, so deficiency more commonly occurs with poor absorption of B12 in the gastrointestinal tract associated with things like having a gastric bypass or Crohn's disease, which can cause inflammation of the terminal ileum, the part of the small intestines where B12 is absorbed. Deficiency can cause peripheral neuropathy, damage to the small nerves, causing numbness of the hands and feet. It could cause progressive vision loss in the form of optic neuropathy. It can also damage the spinal cord, specifically the cervical spine in the neck, the back, and the sides of the spinal cord, causing a syndrome called subacute combined degeneration, causing numbness and weakness weakness of the limbs, and finally it can cause psychiatric changes, memory loss, and even dementia associated with significant damage to the brain. This is not esoteric. I've seen numerous cases of B12 deficiency associated neurological disease in my career. You can also get a B12 deficiency syndrome with nitrous oxide abuse, as in huffing, because nitrous oxide causes rapid metabolism of B12. Number two, copper. This mineral is abundant in tap water, hence it's unlikely to become deficient for nutritional reasons. And just like B12, it more commonly occurs with gastrointestinal illness and poor absorption. Deficiency can cause the same illness of the spinal cord, subacute combined degeneration, causing weakness and numbness of the limbs, just like B12 deficiency, which develops very gradually and can be irreversible. It also turns out the same syndrome can occur with zinc toxicity. Zinc and copper compete in the gastrointestinal tract for absorption and hence consuming large amounts of zinc over a long period of time can be dangerous because it can cause copper deficiency. This has actually occurred in the past with denture cream, which used to contain zinc and no longer does because of this specific risk. I also don't recommend taking zinc supplements chronically over a period of time due to the risk of copper deficiency. Taking it for a brief period if you have a viral illness is perfectly safe. Number three, thiamine. Also known as vitamin B1, it's abundant in whole grains, meat, and fish. And deficiency usually occurs in alcoholics who have limited food intake or in severe malnutrition. Deficiency can cause a lot of different symptoms known as beriberi, such as heart failure or gastrointestinal symptoms. But in severe cases, it can cause damage to areas of the brain, such as the periaqueductal gray, the area around the third ventricle, and the mammillary bodies. It can cause a clinical triad known as vernicus encephalopathy, which is constituted by ophthalmoplegia, paralysis of eye movements, ataxia, unsteadiness of gait, and confusion or dementia. I have a patient who has severe alcoholism who unfortunately developed this syndrome. He's now taken care of by his elderly mother because thiamine stabilized his condition but did not reverse it. In severe cases, it can even cause Korsakoff syndrome characterized by severe confusion, confabulation, making things up, and even death. Number four, pyridoxine. Vitamin B6 is abundant in many fruits and vegetables, seafood, and chicken, and it's important in numerous biochemical processes, including synthesis of certain amino acids and neurotransmitters. Deficiency can cause some vague symptoms like irritability and also peripheral neuropathy damage to the small nerves, causing numbness of the hands and feet. There's also a genetic condition called pyridoxine-dependent epilepsy, where the epilepsy or predisposition to seizures can be treated with pyridoxine supplements. Another interesting fact is that isoniazid, the tuberculosis drug, has a similar structure to pyridoxine and can compete for the same enzymes causing a functional B6 deficiency, which can in turn be treated with supplementation. My personal clinical experience is that vitamin B6 excess toxicity is much more common than deficiency, and this can also cause peripheral neuropathy, peripheral nerve damage. And when I see this, I tell people to stop all supplements containing B6, including multivitamins and B-complex vitamins. Number five, folate. Vitamin B9 is present in many natural foods, such as dark leafy green vegetables and beans. And most famously, it's integral to formation of the neural tube in embryonic development. And hence, deficiency can lead to neural tube defects, such as spina bifida, a malformation of the spine, which 
can lead to leg weakness, and that's why folate is present in prenatal vitamins. In adults, folate deficiency is often asymptomatic, but if severe, it can cause peripheral neuropathy and even memory loss, and it's one of the screening tests for dementia evaluation. Number six, vitamin A. Although abundant in meats, fruits, and vegetables, it's a fat-soluble vitamin, so poor gastrointestinal absorption of fat can lead to deficiency, as in certain conditions like cystic fibrosis. Vitamin A is required for formation of the photoreceptor rhodopsin, and deficiency can lead to night vision loss or even permanent blindness. Number seven, niacin. Vitamin B3 is important as a coenzyme in multiple important enzymatic reactions. Deficiency, known as pellagra, historically occurred in areas that were highly dependent on corn as a food source, which is deficient in niacin unless it's processed in a certain way. In modern times, pellagra occurs mostly with severe malnutrition. It can cause a distinctive rash, but also neurological disease such as muscle weakness, confusion, and even dementia. Number eight, vitamin E. This is another fat-soluble vitamin, and just like vitamin A, deficiency can occur with gastrointestinal fat malabsorption. Vitamin E has antioxidant properties and is important in the immune system, but severe deficiency can lead to neurological disease, such as degeneration of the cerebellum, leading to gait imbalance. It can also cause confluent white matter lesions on MRI scans, leading to different neurological syndromes, along with an eye condition called retinitis pigmentosa, leading to visual loss. Number nine, riboflavin. Vitamin B2 is used to synthesize flavin adenine dinucleotide, which is part of the glutathione antioxidant pathway. Severe deficiency can cause painful peripheral neuropathy, burning of the hands and feet, ophthalmoplegia, paralysis of eye movements, or even generalized weakness. But really severe riboflavin deficiency is quite rare, and the most common use of riboflavin supplements is prevention of migraine headaches. The doses is three to 400 milligrams once a day. It can cause your urine to be bright yellow, but is otherwise very safe. Number 10, biotin. Vitamin B7 is important in fatty acid synthesis and various other biochemical processes. Of course, deficiency of biotin is well known to cause brittle hair and nails, hence the well-marketed hair and nail supplements containing biotin. But deficiency can also sometimes cause neurological symptoms like fatigue, numbness, and weakness. So let me know if you've had any of these vitamin deficiencies, what were your symptoms, and did you get better with supplementation, and is there anything I left off the list or didn't add to each of these potential deficiency syndromes? And for people who watch my videos for multiple sclerosis content, do you like a little diversity like this, or do you prefer I stick to my main topic? And let me know if you have ideas for other videos.